Hello everybody, uh, Todd back again. Uh, Super Bowl Sunday. So um, if you watch my last video, which was uh, either the chili or the, um, what the previous one was I made. Anyway, I can't remember. Uh, gumbo. So that's what we're here. Super Bowl Sunday, gonna make a gumbo. Um, it's about 12.30 here. I wanted to do this yesterday. I didn't get around to it. Um, prefer to do it the day before um, and the sit overnight, but we'll get done, not serving till about six, so got a few hours. Anyway, gumbo, um, it's kind of a stock. Um, you got onion, uh, bell peppers. I got red and green. I use celery, a couple tomatoes. I have a grilled chicken breast and a spicy sausage, specifically andouille sausage. Um, and then we're just gonna make that with a stock and then we serve it with rice. So the first thing I do is make a roux. Um, and we'll go over the cooktop, get working on that. And then, oh, I also add shrimp at the end. So you can do any type of seafood, clams, fish. I traditionally just do shrimp, chicken, and spicy sausage. So, but there's really no rules for making a gumbo. All right, we get over the cooktop. This is probably a good two or three hour recipe. The brew takes a while. So if you're planning, um, just give your time on this one too. So, all right, we'll get started. All right, um, the first step in making a roux, or excuse me, a gumbo, is making a roux. And a roux, um, in cooking terms, is basically 50% flour and 50% fat. Um, for this recipe, I'm going to use uh, peanut oil because we're going to make a dark roux, which means we're going to cook it um, a long time to get it dark. Um, if a blonde roux, you can use butter, but you don't want to use an oil or butter that's going to burn easily. I don't recommend olive oil. It has a, a distinct flavor and peanut oil has a very high smoke point. Um, so you can use vegetable oil. Um, that works as well, but I'm using peanut oil for this one. Um, I haven't used peanut oil before, but I read it gives it extra flavor. So um, I'm making a, this is a, a six quart stock pot. Um, so probably gonna just make over a gallon of gumbo, more or less. And the rule is about a cup of roux to a gallon of stock. So that's kind of the ratio. So um, I'm just gonna get started by, I got my, I got the, I got a cast iron skillet. I'm doing this separately because I'm gonna cook this in the oven. Uh, not, you can do it right in the, um, the stock pot, but uh, if you burn it, it's gonna ruin the dish. So if you better do it in the side, if you burn it, you start over. So, all right, so I'm just gonna measure I got this is a half cup so I'm just gonna measure about I kind of do this in steps and I'll put all that in. just use a, use a blast of my flour so that's close to a, um, a little more than a half cup of flour and now I want to measure my oil So that's about a half cup of oil, and then we'll start whisking this together. Now, what you're trying to consist consistency you're trying to get for is like a wet sand. If it's too thick, you get a little bit of oil. If it's too thin, add more flour. And do this on a very low heat because you can, if you burn it, um, you're gonna ruin the gumbo. So I recommend using a wire whisk. Um, just gets breaks up all the flour clumps and kind of in baby steps go really slow over a low flame what you're trying to do is cook this to almost a chocolate color so I'm not sure if the lighting there you go so you can see that now it looks just looks like a tan color okay um, I added a little bit more flour, uh, just thicken up. Now you can see it looks like wet sand. It was a little loose before, so that's kind of the, you know, the step that you take. You know, start with a little oil and flour, and then build it up from there. I'm not sure you can see in the camera, but it's already starting to change color a little bit. So there's two ways you can do this. I can do this over the cooktop, and it'll take a good. To get a really dark brown root, you're looking at like 40 minutes. And again, the trick is if you burn it, then you're stuck. You have to start all over. Or you can do it in the oven. So what I do is I start in the cast iron skillet. I got my oven preheated 375. You put it in the oven, then it, that way you're almost guaranteed not to burn it. Just don't put your oven on too high. So I'll put this in the oven. Um, it'll be more of a consistent cook, and we can watch the colorization of it. And then 
while I'm doing that, I can prep um, everything else for the gumbo. So into the oven and you know, just check it every five or 10 minutes, give it a stir. All right, prep time now for the gumbo. So first thing I'm gonna do is get my shrimp. Um, I got some frozen shrimp. I use fresh shrimp, not pre-cooked. Um, you can buy it raw, frozen. I got about, I don't know, maybe 20 medium-sized ones. They're not too big. Uh, they do cook down quite a bit. Uh, so get those running under cold water. All right, I just started cutting my vegetables. So I got about uh, half a green pepper. Um, I have an extra one, I might cut up a little bit more. Uh, half a red bell pepper. I like to use them both, red and green. Um, I got a big onion, I'm only use about half of it. And then I have some celery stalks, probably um, three or four. The rule of thumb for celery to onion is about a third celery to two thirds onion. So not quite 50-50, whatever that ratio is. Um, again, I'm making about um, just over a gallon of gumbo. So probably a cup and a half or so of all the vegetables. So we'll just get chopping. Oh, and then fresh garlic. I use fresh garlic. So we'll get cutting then. All right, I got my vegetables cut. So again, celery, uh, green and red bell peppers, uh, an onion, and then I, I cut up two Roma tomatoes and then about three cloves of garlic. I put these in a separate dish because I don't wanna, what we do is we add the vegetables to the roux, which is very hot, and if you burn the garlic, again, you're gonna ruin the dish. So it's added, best to add it in layers. Uh, a traditional gumbo also has okra. I'm not a big fan of okra. Um, you can use it, um, I just don't use it, so. Uh, you can certainly find it in most stores, but uh, you certainly don't need it. So next thing we want to do, we want to check on the roux. So we're going to, the roux's been in the oven for about 20 minutes and we'll see how that's. All right, the roux is, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but it's got a darker color. Um, it's almost like a butterscotch now, which is what we're, we're trying to get it as dark as you can. Um, it's starting to smell nutty. That's what you want, the nutty flavor, the smell. Um, partly see that's because of peanut oil. So. It's going along good. Once you see it's changing color, um, again, you want this to get about chocolate color. You can use it now as it is, but I just like, like a little more darker and richer. So back in the oven. Okay, um, again, for my main, the meat in the dish is I have grilled chicken breast, and I just grilled off about uh, two and a half medium sized chicken breasts, and then andouille sausage. I also grilled this too. It's already pre cooked, but I grilled just to get a little smoky flavor. So just try, I pre cook it. Um, especially because again, just want to control the consistency and kind of build the stock first and then add your meat, build it up. Um, you put everything in a pot and raw, just kind of just blows together and it gets a little sludgy and it's just not a clean uh, gumbo. So um, our roux is almost done. Again, it's been in the oven about a half hour. Um, it's getting a dark brown, but so we're gonna get started on the uh, gumbo soon. All right, I got the roux out of the oven. And if you can see how dark it has become now, I'll get a better light for that. It's like a, basically a butterscotch color. You can go longer and darker, but I think it's good for me. It's just time and it just gets more rich. But So this is very hot. Um, be careful if you're cooking with kids, this is very scalding. It could be quite dangerous if you got it on your skin or splash it. So. In my stock pot, I started half the vegetables, just a little bit of vegetable oil, vegetable oil get those um, cooking down. And then the rest of my vegetables, I'm gonna add right into the roux. This it does two things. It stops the roux from cooking and it also helps cook down the peppers and the onions. So again, the pan's very hot, so it's gonna help cook these um, vegetables down. All right, I got my Vegetables in the sock pot, uh, the onions are starting to break down. I actually, with the root and the vegetables, just kind of kept it over low, low heat to cook them down a little bit more. Again, don't burn it, but just get those cooked. And I'm gonna add my tomatoes and garlic to the um, stock pot and get these cooking. This will actually help um, break down the acidity in tomatoes. Anyway, get the garlic cooked. All right, I got um, the tomatoes are going. So just about cooked down. I got my roux vegetables on the side. Two bay leaves, or two, one big bay leaf, two, two small ones. Go that in. And then I'm gonna start adding my stock. So this is a, this is about a quart here. 
just chicken stock. You can use fish stock, but please use some kind of stock, not just water. It just won't, it'll be too watery. So, so what you wanna do is you bring your stock to a boil and then you add your roux. Okay, I got my stock um, to a boil. So now we're gonna slowly add the, the roux and the vegetables into the stock. And a little bit at a time, about half at a time. Give it a good whisk. Make sure you break up the, the roux. So right away it should start to thicken up. The longer it cooks, the more thicker it's going to get. So that's the, the secret. And we'll add the rest of it in. So it's already starting to thicken up like a gravy. And we still have to cook this quite a bit more. So I turned on my heat. I'm going to add the rest of my stock. Okay, I added more stock just up to basically the handles of the, of the stock pot. That's always a good rule of thumb. And you can see the camera. It's, it's a nice um, beige brownish color. That's what you want. That's what gumbo is. So at this point, we just got to let this cook down. You got to cook the roux out. Um, it's, if you taste right now, it'll be a little grainy. But the longer you let it simmer, um, it'll cook out. So that's the way it works with the roux. And let those vegetables cook down better. So we just got on a low heat, uh, get it on a simmer. Um, probably gonna take another hour or so at least. And by the time you're doing that, I'm gonna serve this with, with cornbread. Uh, I gotta make some rice. Uh, the rice will keep on the side, and then I'm gonna get ready for Super Bowl tonight. So again, low heat. Just come back and stir it every 10, 15 minutes. Keep an eye on it, and then um, you know give it give it a good hour or so. All right, we've been um, on the cooktop. This has been going for probably a good hour now. Um, it's condensed down quite a bit. And so I want to add the, right now, the chicken and the sausage. So that's going to go in. I haven't had, added any seasonings yet. No salt, no pepper. There is a lot of salt in the sausage. Um, so be mindful of that. I was seasoning at the end. Um, this cooks down, it'll concentrate. So here's my shrimp. I cooked. Um, I cooked on the side again because the shrimp has a lot of water in it. If you cooked it in here, you'll just dilute the gumbo even more. It would kind of mess up your consistency of the stock. Uh, but I just grill these on my barbecue in a um, grilling basket because so they get a little smoky flavor with them. And they're you know medium-sized shrimp. I'm gonna cut them in half before I throw them in, in at the end. But again, right at the end when the gumbo's ready, uh, just put these in because they're already cooked. So. Okay, um, we're in the final stretch. Um, I think this is cooked enough. Um, one thing that usually I cook the rice on the side, which I did in this case. I just I usually serve the rice on the side and people can add as they go. But I actually want to get this a little thicker. Um, so what it, one trick is if you add the rice, and I only cook this rice about um, not fully cooked, but maybe two thirds, because rice has a lot of starch in it as well. If you add the rice to the break it into the gumbo. This will add, it's help as a thickener too, so. Anyway, spices, so I got some parsley. Um, fresh parsley would be best, I should've got some for that, for this, but I didn't, so we'll just go with the dried. So probably a good tablespoon of parsley. Um, I like a little heat, so actually I'm gonna do some garlic powder. Just you know, a couple shakes. Um, Onion powder, and then for the little heat, I need some. All right, so I got my crushed red pepper, a few flakes, not too much, and then a little bit of salt. Again, remember there's salt in the sausage, so it'll taste for that. And crushed ground pepper. Right, it's been going about 10 minutes since I put the rice in. Shrimp's going in. And let that go. It's pretty much done, so we'll um, serve it up in a few minutes, give it a final taste test. And Okay, it, um, I pulled off the heat. Um, as always, I like to show the final product. So there you go. It's a shrimp, chicken, and sausage gumbo. Um, again, it took about a good three hours, so. Let's get a final taste. My friends aren't coming over for another hour or so, so they can 
kind of get better as it sits, but there you go, a little sausage, shrimp, chicken. Mm. Mm. <laughs> really good. Um, I think it's better every time I make it. So it's just an art, I mean, first couple times you make this might, might not come out great, but just keep at it and you'll know what you uh, missed or it's not enough roux or you like it, not enough spice, but anyway. I'll put this up and happy Super Bowl everybody and uh, go Rams.